Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session. Today, uh, Lionel, Julia, Trish, Juanita uh, are joining us. Uh, today, we have our session uh, by Hecho por Nosotros and uh, Animana uh, on uh, how how to transform fashion um, using ancestral techniques. Uh, welcome, and um, please uh, share in the chat uh, where are you joining us from and um, what's your organization? What do you want to learn from this um, event? And Lionel, I'll give the floor for you to introduce yourself and introduce the other panel uh, speakers. Thank you all and welcome. Okay, thank you, Karen. Ah, Adriana, you, you are there. Yeah, <laughs> hello. Okay, um, maybe you want to introduce the... Um, I, can, I, can, I can start, okay. sorry. Uh, well, um, thank you for the brief introduction. Welcome everybody to this session organized by Hecho por Nosotros called Coming Back to the Roots, How to Transform the Fashion System, Wisdom, Ancestral Techniques and Technologies. Um, well, as we all know, we are reunited here, here by Catalyst Change Week 2024, dedicated to building the social innovation sector. And its goal is to tackle system change solutions with action-oriented sessions that focus on policy, leadership, innovative, and innovative solutions. To make this happen, we need to bring together all the actors involved in this change, the grassroots, social entrepreneurs, representatives from the private sector, governments, funders, youth, and others who are working to address the world's most pressing challenges. We believe in a future where tradition and innovation converge seamlessly. Hecho por nosotros and Animana have been working on long years on this path. We know it is possible to bridge the gap between the grassroots with their ancestral knowledge and the best practices with the fashion industry, one of the most um, negative, one of the most um, negative industries for this world. Um, in terms of environmental impact, of course. Hecho por Nosotros is a nonprofit organization founded by Adriana Marina in 2008. Our primary mission is to shift the fashion industry from a fast fashion economy to a sector that respects the environment and human rights and is in harmony with the principle, principles of fair trade, the ancestral knowledge of indigenous people and natural raw materials through stakeholders development and emerging technologies. I, I am now blessed that we are uh, having Adriana here, the founder and our uh, great um, inspiration. And I will give her the word to, to, to give her insight and to share with us her knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Um, um, hello to all. It's an honor to be sharing uh, again in Catalyst. I think it's so important to be all together catalyzing in this system change. You now, how we really learn uh, to collaborate, to integrate, to share knowledge. And in this sense, Animana and Hecho por Nosotros has this journey working with artisans, producers, micro, small, medium firms, and all stakeholders together in a transdisciplinary and in a co-created way, co-creating solutions for uh, collaboration. And I think it's the time uh, to see the ones that are doing, you no? Know? Uh, at Catalyst, there are so many Ashoka Fellows um, and, and leaders around the world that has this systemic change uh, approach and lead uh, solutions that are so important to be scaled up. At the same time, we find uh, every day 
uh, so many challenges. So Catalyst that brings us together and aims to bring also um, impact investors and policy makers and universities uh, totally aligned with the work of Hecho por Nosotros is such an important uh, space that we need to enhance and fertilize. Uh, today we will be presenting the journey of Animana and Hecho por Nosotros. Animana is a B Corp, a social brand that works with artisans and producers uh, of natural fibers from Patagonia all across the Andes. Uh, this allowed us uh, to go, go deep in the bottlenecks and the problems. If uh, we talk about this year, is the year of camelids at the United Nations, such an important species uh, for our biodiversity and our culture. This is in the core of the work of Animana and Hecho por Nosotros, to go deep into the bottlenecks, the fragmentation and the issues that uh, make us, uh, let's say, uh, co-creators of this uh, systemic change in the core. If we see camelids are uh, the finest fibers of the world, we have Bunya, we have Guanaco that joins the poorest people of the world with the richest. No, what happens in the middle? And here we have all this fragmentation, this uh, deny of uh, the grassroots of the communities, their knowledge, their wisdom, and uh, how to apply the different tools that we created with the grassroots in order to really understand how we go back to our roots, how we go to circularity and to regenerate our system. So Gameli is so interesting that uh, can be in, in, the, in the center. Uh, at Hecho por Nosotros, we, what we have done hand by hand with Animana in its roots is share these practices of co-creation and collaboration with so many stakeholders, student, students, professionals, leaders of sustainability around the world, and share the good practices. I think this collaboration is the challenge that humanity and our society has. So when you embrace and you found a way in order to, um, to develop another way of consumption of production, it's totally needed to be uh, shared in collaboration with the different stakeholders. And this is the long work of Hecho por Nosotros. We have, we have a ECOSOC status consultative at United Nations, and this allowed us to host it more than 30 events sharing this vision of the grassroots of local wisdom, how can we intertwine technology and the tools of our system with the grassroots and create innovative circular and regenerative models together. Uh, today, we will do a part of our journey, what is our university of systemic change that has tools for um, consumers around the world for professionals, leaders of uh, companies, brands that want to dive in into circularity, design thinking and good practices. Then we have areas of medium firms. Locally in the global south, we have so many local firms, micro, small, medium firms, that uh, have in their core sustainability and circularity, but do not find a way to appropriate of the value added they create. They cannot access easily to technology, technology tools, to collaborative frameworks in order to enhance their uh, local uh, productions and uh, to go 
go uh, deeper into the development of local communities. Um, the other area, area is uh, around artisans and producers that are far from the system and they uh, find in Hecho por Nosotros this opportunity to go through the door of technology and the different tools to enhance their communities, families, and uh, relate differently at the value chain. So uh, the group of Hecho por Nosotros leaders as Julia Salas, Leonel Aguilar, Juanita Hernández, uh, we will be sharing different aspects of our uh, toolkit and work. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Adriana. Thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, we are now twenty nine people, so we we are a reasonable number. We can continue. The idea of this event is to talk about passion and sustainability from different point of view, uh, different experiences. Um, there are some panelists, uh, Trish, um, Juanita, um, myself, of course, and we are going to talk about that. Um, please, if anyone in the audience want to uh, ask about something, please write it on the on the chat. Uh, the idea is to have an interactive uh, conversation and discussion about this. Uh, so let me introduce Trish. Uh, Trish, Trish Langman is a collaborator from Hecho por Nosotros. She lives in the in the US, works there, um, developing a fantastic academic. Uh, um, activity, and um, she's going to share her experience about uh, circular economy with us. Uh, please, Trish. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to Catalyst. Um, <clears throat> happy to be here. Um, so um, um, I'm an educator and a designer, so um, I'm going to give you that perspective. At Hedge I Nosotros, um, I'm a partner and I help manage the educational initiatives. Uh, and also the Africa initiatives. And um, we do a lot of interrelated work around uh, different systems, regenerative systems, and circularity being one of the core uh, parts of that. Um, we work with educators and designers um, around the world uh, because we believe in co-creation and uh, collaboration. Uh, and uh, one of our main projects has been uh, the toolkit, which has been uh, something that we, um, hope that will uh, give access to information around uh, systems like circularity. Um, I think for a lot of people, um, the idea uh, we've been, you know, we thought sort of in a very linear uh, way uh, in terms of um, us as a consumer and then us as a, you know, we don't really think about what happens long-term to our pieces of clothing. Um, and I think uh, thinking in a more circular manner, has forced um, a lot of people who are designers, who are at this sort of start of the sort of product cycle to kind of think um, think differently. So designing with much more intention uh, and designing with um, uh, more, being more conscious and mindful about uh, the materials that you use and the sources of those materials so that they can be recycled. Um, and for those of you who don't know, you know what the circular economy in, is um, it is what it says. It's um, um, things staying in a circular system. So um, just like um, you know anything else that um, works in a circular way, uh, we you know what we want is uh, when you buy something to think about how it you know its end of life and how that can be used. So for us, um, you know, we integrate um, our support and you know the promoting of the circular economy through um, things like um, technology. Uh, we believe that you know, technology, can, technology can be our friend. It's not the answer to everything, but it is uh, a way of giving access to many people, um, some tools that they can use uh, to you know, make circularity a reality in their 
um, communities. Um, I think that, you know, uh, for big businesses uh, who have a lot of waste, um, you know, thinking in a circular way, thinking about your end of life of what you make uh, is really, really important, but you can do it on a very localized level as well. And that is part of what we do at Hedgepreneur Sostros. We work with, with the grassroots, we work with indigenous communities uh, who are mostly sometimes um, a lot more sustainable just naturally because they are in harmony with nature. Uh, but we give them some other tools, like we educate them on what those resources can become. We educate them on systems and um, we educate them using tools like our toolkit so that they can um, scale if they want or they can maintain the lives of uh, the livelihoods uh, in a you know respectable and um, a way that gives them some um, equity uh, you know because a lot of the time just prosperity isn't shared. Um, I think one of the main things the learnings from the toolkit is uh, this idea of uh, co-creation and collaboration and um, learning from our ancestral knowledge. I mean, I teach um, batik, I teach uh, people about wovens and knits um, and um, all of those techniques uh, have traditionally relied on being very much in harmony with nature, uh, um, the materials that you use and um, the way that it's consumed is on a localized scale because we work in a very mass uh, mass scale at the moment, it's very uh, difficult to kind of uh, implement those systems. And so at Hedgeponosotros, with our toolkit, what we have done is make sure that we have, uh, we get our the word out with our tools, with our, um, with our educational initiatives to businesses, uh, to uh, localized communities, um, and to the next generation uh, of um, change makers and, you know, system disruptors that are our youth. Um, so um, with that, um, I'm just, that's just me just rounding up a little bit about, um, you know, the work I do and how um, Hedgefonosotros integrates technology, uh, ancient wisdom uh, with circularity. Uh, thanks, thanks, Trish. Trish. Um, so having listened to Trish, and talking about the toolkit, let me let me talk a little more about it. Um, my name is Leonel Aguilera. I'm also a collaborator from Hecho por Nosotros. And I'm going to share my screen now. Um, OK. Do you see my screen? Yes. Oh, that's great. Probably something that seems uh, a little complex, but it is not. This mind map describes the, the toolkit, the so-called toolkit. Um, Echo Nosotros' unique proposition is to connect artisans to resources that not only help them to prepare their goods for market, but also elevate them from the sidelines to the forefront of the global fashion economy. And several volunteers are working on that. And some of them are developing this toolkit for collaboration and education, which stand out for its comprehensive approach and commitment to sustainable and ethical practices. This toolkit is not a merely it's not merely a resource. I would say it is a blueprint for, for change. We want to support uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises in the textile industry that aim to develop sustainability practices. And we want to go beyond. For example, waving advanced technology like blockchain into the industry very darn, ensuring traceability and integrity. This toolkit, um, the, the roadmap of this toolkit is straightforward and strategic. It starts with an educational platform that shapes mind and home skills to, for example, courses in business management, sustainability, supply change, 
creativity, and environmental practices. Uh, this is followed by a networking hub where shared goals bring together diverse actors from various backgrounds and practical experiences, fostering uh, the co-creation of solutions. And finally, it culminates in a B2B marketplace for these uh, small and medium enterprises, a platform to showcase sustainable practices and products, marking the successful implementation of the toolkit. Um, as this slide shows, the toolkit vision is to address some of the fashion industry's most pressing challenges. Uh, for example, water pollution, microplastic fibers, and labor exploitation. So let's look at these challenges and how the Hecho por Nosotros toolkit provides a solution. The, fas the fashion industry uses approximately 92 billion cubic meters of water annually, contaminating bodies with dye and chemicals. Additionally, nearly, nearly 500,000 tons of microplastic from synth synthetic textiles enter our oceans each year, causing irreversible damage to marine life. And uh, on top of that, millions of garment workers, predominantly women, are below living wages and are subjected to poor working conditions. The Hecho por Nosotros toolkit is not, is not just a solution to the fashion industry's challenges. It is a gateway to a more sustainable and ethical future. The toolkit empowers artisans and small and medium enterprises by bringing together Animana and Hecho por Nosotros, providing a platform for collaboration and market access. This transparent platform seeks seeks to transition the fashion, the fashion industry from a fast fashion economy to one that respects the environment, the environment, the human rights, fair trade principles, indigenous knowledge, and natural raw materials, offering a promising future for all the stakeholders. At the core of this ecosystem is the value of traditional art. The toolkit supports local entrepreneurs and artisans, ensuring their traditional skills and products uh, reach global markets. It provides training, sustainable sourcing and production methods, introduce quality controls and offer financial resources to artisans and micro, small and medium ent enterprises. In the future, advanced technology like blockchain will enhance enhance transparency and traceability, building trust between producers and consumers. Our vision is to establish a circular and regenerative economy where artisans and micro, small and medium enterprises can connect to new markets, create livelihoods and promote sustainable practices like natural fibers from alpaca, llama and wool. We advocate for inclusive policies Prioritizing fair trade and environmental sustainability, ultimately creating an ecosystem where trust and transparency can flourish. The Hecho por Nosotros toolkit is not just a tool, it is a catalyst for change in the, fragment, in the fragmented fashion industry. It aims to create business impact through sustainable sourcing, transparent supply chain, and commitment to circularity, inclusivity, and co creation. By addressing systemic problems and promoting sustainable practices, the toolkit is poised to bring about a significant shift in the industry, making it more suitable, ethical, and equitable. And equitable uh, making oh, sustainable. Together, we can empower the fashion industry to become a force for good, honoring tradition, respecting the environment, and promoting economic prosperity. The Hecho por Nosotros toolkit bridge gaps in this fragmented industry, addressing systemic problems while creating a more sustainable and equitable future for all stakeholders. 
So thank you. This is our toolkit. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, uh, Leonel um, and Julia and Trish. Um, so important in this uh, moment that we are transiting these projects that are born from holistic models, no, and uh, with system systemic point of view, where all areas uh, are considered as as one, no. And maybe when we see the fragmentation of our value chains that are causing enormous damages to our biodiversity, culture, uh, people around the world, um, we see this fragmentation inside of us now. And I think the most important is how we transit an experience where we can uh, really understand uh, how we are part of a system. Uh, we are nature, our nature is so collaborative and we are disrupting the system without understanding we are actors, we are part, we are members of this system. So all projects that brings all stakeholders in a transversal way where we forget from where we are, uh, our profession, our age, our country, and we embrace local problems, issues, and together co-create solutions uh, are so important to give a different voice and to really integrate ourselves, our communities, our biodiversity, business model, and technology as a tool. Um, technology as a tool, I, I see, so many unicorns, uh, startups, uh, talking about um, different uh, successful programs, no? But then when you go to the grassroots, artisans, producers, micro, small, medium films that are the biggest part of our societies, our communities, our reality every day are so alone, yes, and so far, from many of the uh, tools. Um, as well, when you go to universities, academics, leaders, that we, uh, we can have so many tools and uh, opportunities, is this feeling we are not doing the right things. So to dive in and experience this collaboration and transform, giving the opportunity to use, to understand uh, the complexity of the value chains, the local issues, um, the wisdom and interchange in a creative dialogue are based for the new creative and circular economy uh, in a way that we could regenerate our system. If we talk about fashion, we are not in fashion, it's not fashion, but when you work with artisans and producers, you finish under that umbrella. And what is interesting is that we are all part of this industry, an industry that is uh, the one that creates more value added, the richest people of the world, more than in technology, more, more than in Google, are the owners of the, uh, these groups of fashion, no? And many times when we uh, talk about the issues and the problem, in, immigration, loss of biodiversity, uh, the gender issues, the sexual abuse, the bad use of technology doesn't appear fashion at the front. The other day I was hearing the parliament of UK receiving a designer in order to understand more about the fashion industry and the issues. <laughs> Uh, United Kingdom is full of trash of this plastic and not only is using the rest of the world as a trash. The contamination in their bodies, in their homes, in their cities, a lot of academics talking, uh, full in their uh, mouth 
And now talking about artisan in order to uh, say something without any responsibility, yes? So the, the theme and the moment we are uh, living and when we talk fashion is the moment we are living. Fashion that now the obsolescence of uh, each cloth is instant, no? It's not fast, it's hyper fast. And we are letting youth from 12 to 20 years to be the main actors, the main consumers of this fashion industry, but using their energy, their time, and their health, their environment, and being uh, at the same time when they are dressed, being the actors of all this disaster we are talking. So to go deep in understanding this industry, and transforming as a platform for good is an obligation of all of us. It is a journey we, we should uh, take, yes? And going through this transformation, we really can give birth to the new creative and circular economy. So all the tools, all the knowledge, put it together in this University of Systemic Chain, the toolkit as a tool of Moodle are so important to be shared at universities, organizations, cooperatives, firms, in order that we can continue constructing. Uh, as an Ashoka Fellow, uh, we receive uh, um, collaborators around the world that come on board in order to do this journey, to co-create. We receive artisans, producers, every uh, actor, our part, we are uh, hand by hand with uh, Stanford Angel Entrepreneurs that would like Hecho por Nosotros uh, to grow as uh, a model of system change with all the stakeholders going ahead. So, so important that uh, all of you come on board. Um, today, I would like also to invite, here is Vanessa. <laughs> Hello, Vanessa. Vanessa is a collaborator and she can be like the sample of why me and so many as Trish, Julia, uh, Lionel, Juanita that are here and hundred thousand all these years uh, through Hecho por Nosotros came on board uh, leaders from universities, but the more important students, artisans, producers, no? And uh, Vanessa can be like representing what is our work of every day. Vanessa, would you like to present your story of life and your work? Thank you. Vane, tienes el micrófono apagado. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. I am Vanessa Elizabeth Enriquez Pacaya. I grew up in a uh, what we know called Pachacute. Uh, I will. We podemos desmutear. Okay. An area insulated from the city and covered in sand for many years. We struggled to have water, electricity, and see what's basic necessity. Oh, sorry, uh, lo voy a hacer en español. Eh, hola, soy Vanessa Elizabeth Enriquez Pacaya. Crecí en invasión a lo que hoy llamamos Pachacute. Al ser un lugar aislado de la ciudad y cubierto por arena, por muchos años luchamos por tener agua, luz y desagüe. Así también eh, necesidades básicas como comer o vestirse. Algunas de ellas fueron cubiertas por donaciones o ropa de segunda mano. Y muchos años después de viajar a España, eh, gracias a haber ganado una beca para estudiar diseño, me di con la sorpresa del increíble hiperconsumismo y como sobre todo la ropa se usaba de forma descartable. Vanessa. Dígame. Disculpa, porque hay varios que hablan en inglés. ¿Te parece que hagamos 
un pedacito que vos hablás y lo traducimos para que todos entiendan, porque está buenísimo lo que estás diciendo. Sí, ok, si quieren, sí está yo bien. podría traducir. Dale, Karen. Super. Continúa, Vanessa. Uh, okay. Wait, uh, I'm going to uh, translate for all the people uh, that are uh, speaking English for all of us to uh, be on the same line, okay? So Vanessa will speak in Spanish and I will follow up. Vanessa, por favor. Ok, ok. Eh, eh, empezaré entonces. Eh, soy Vanessa, crecí en Pachacute. Eh, es, Pachacute en sus inicios fue una invasión y por muchos años luchamos para tener agua, luz y desagüe. Así también okay. necesidades básicas como vestir y comer. Ok. Uh, so she's saying I'm Vanessa, I'm from Pachacute. And uh, it used to be an invasion and they were struggling to have uh, lighting and well, well-being in, in their housing. Ok. Eh, muchos años, este... Después de haber este, obtenido una beca para estudiar diseño en España, me di con la sorpresa del increíble hiperconsumismo y como sobre todo la ropa se usaba de forma descartable, ya que yo había crecido eh, consumiendo ropa de segunda mano y donaciones, me sorprendí mucho con eso. Okay. Um, after years of uh, first being granted a scholarship in Spain, I realized how consumist was uh, the society as uh, people were ha like buying fast fashion and that was not um, well related to my background in which I received um, secondhand clothing and um, well was really neat on using the, yeah, the clothing. Eh, al llegar en invierno en Europa, compré ropa para mis cuatro años de carrera. Sin embargo, esta ropa no duró ni meses. Me sorprendió ya que la ropa que usaba de segunda mano me duraba por muchos años en Perú. Uh, so, uh, when I was in Spain, I bought uh, clothes for my four years of degree. And I was surprised when I realized that uh, the, the clothing didn't last long. Um, in comparison with the clothing I had in, in Peru, and that was actually secondhand clothing. Y fue mucho más triste, mucho más triste para mí enterarme cómo estas ropas provenían de fábricas donde hermanos eran esclavizados para así que las personas en Europa puedan acceder a ropa más barata. Como persona que alguna vez trabajó en fábrica, pude entender ese dolor, pero no lo suficiente al comparar las condiciones de mis compañeros. So it It was really hard, hurting to me to realize that uh, brothers and sisters around the world were being exploded uh, for producing this fast fashion uh, for people in Europe to uh, buy a multiple clothes. Uh, I personally worked in, a, in an industry, but I cannot compare my experience with uh, that exploitation. También al regresar a mi país junto a mis compañeras, buscamos formas de darse una segunda vida a las prendas que no pudimos llevar a la maleta. Sin embargo, esta ropa, por, que muchas veces nos engaña y nos dicen que es donada, terminan en los basureros. Y si la ropa le falta un botón o tiene una, un agujero o, o algo está roto, simplemente es botada a la basura. Cuando okay. uh, came back with my uh, classmates, we tried to give it a another try to those clothings that we couldn't like take uh, back. However, we realized that it didn't last longer. And also we realized that some of the clothing that's mentioned that it was going to be donated to other people was actually thrown away. Even if they have in imperfections like a uh, bad button or something with the, uh, with the cloth, it's just being thrown out. Así que al regresar a mi país decidí estudiar costura y reparación de prendas. Así como diseñadora, comprometerme en hacer productos sostenibles, respetando el planeta como nuestros ancestros lo hacían, y también proporcionar condiciones laborales dignas a mis compañeros trabajadores. Eso sería todo. Ok. Uh, last uh, sentence uh, says that uh, when she came back to Perú, she wanted, well, she started studying... Um, 
at sewing and preparing to fix some clothing and try to um, face uh, this issue by its own. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for your great quality. <laughs> and it's so, so strong to hear Vanessa uh, is one, one person, not, but we have uh, a thousand of few women, no? We that now in gender, we are the biggest consumer of this industry. We have many times in hands the decisions of the textiles of our homes, our children, and many issues uh, around this. And being the main consumers of this industry, we are exploiting uh, internationally uh, women around the world, no? And we are uh, supporting all these, uh, let's say, injustices in the value chains, destroying biodiversity, destroying lives without not knowing. So consciousness, awareness, I think is the journey and see how uh, Vanessa herself doing an own journey could understand profoundly many of the issues that were um, so near in her story uh, in Peru that uh, the, the fast fashion and the industry instead of uh, enhancing all this culture and this uh, potentiality uh, also, it gets a lot of energy and time uh, for this fast fashion. Everywhere, the system interrupts, destroying the good practices, the biodiversity, the opportunities. So this is a question of values. When we talk about uh, fashion, we are talking about the values we are wearing all around the world every day. And this is not just fast fashion as the cheap fashion, no, that is very, uh, it's very costly for all in, really, in reality. Uh, the luxury fashion has the same system, yes? And at the same time shares, let's say, brings together the richest people of the world. And also uh, is holding sustainability as uh, a main core. So, if they are so sustainable, all these groups, all these reports are true, why we have these issues around the world? No, I think it's the time to think that this system is finished, is out, the false of certification, to go out for middlemen to begin to produce locally, to enhance locally, to fertilize, to share uh, good practices, knowledge, to be together as human beings and evolve our creativity, our power, and live, uh, transit this system change. Uh, here is also from Hecho por Nosotros, Juanita. Would you like to share some experiences? Hi, how are you? Hola, Adriana. Hola, Vanessa. Everyone here. Uh, yes, my experience is uh, with the capacity building, uh, artisan capacity building. I'm a lover of artisans. I actually work with artisans here in Colombia. But going here uh, with Hecho por Nosotros, I uh, learned this uh, this way. I, I, I've already like work it and, and know it, and I've been trying to do that, but in the way that Adriana is doing it in, in the Universidad, in uh, Artisans University, is incredible. This is one of the core of even the heart of Hecho por Nosotros, the artisans, the preservation of, uh, of heritage and cultures. Uh, in the Artisan University, artisans develop new knowledge and strength their own and proper and unique knowledge, you know, this knowledge that we won't be uh, finding anywhere more than in their hands, in their knowledge, in the preservations, in the uh, the way that the grandmothers, the moms, and transmitted to their sons and, and, and daughters. 
I've been part of, it, of this project of capacity building and uh, it's amazing and hard moving. See, these artisans start to believe even more in their knowledge and projects. Because in the, in the University of Capacity Buildings, what we are doing is uh, giving some, uh, I don't know, like uh, tools to artisans so they can create their own, their, their own enterprises so they can develop their, uh, their, their, their knowledge in colors, in catalogs, uh, in how can, uh, they can uh, make uh, their own collection with their, with their knowledge, you know? Uh, in these capacity buildings, uh, their teachers uh, prepare uh, themselves to, to compete in international markets uh, and be part of the fair trade, you know? Be part of the, uh, to receive uh, fair payments, to know the value of their, of their work and, and of course, to understand and to know that the things that they know are unique and they are the only one that have this, uh, this knowledge. So it's a preservation from the cultures, it's a preservation uh, from, the, from the mom's and grandma's knowledge, but it's a preservation of biodiversity too. Because as we know, uh, and we know we are in the Camelidos, uh, year because uh, of the importance of preserve the, the 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 places where the people is working for this uh, I don't know how to say this word in English is like services ecosystemicos uh, <laughs> systemic services <laughs> uh, <okay>. thank you <laughs> the ecosystemic services and know how to uh, to live with them and to know how to use it and to know how to preserve it to our own wellness but even for the nature no so this is what Echo por nosotros is doing i have the opportunity to work with the camarones uh, uh girls and it's incredible to see how they work with the wolf with the wolf with the wolf uh, from camarones and know right now how much does their, their knowledge is is value, you know? So uh, we use technology to with this because they are in Camarones, far away. We are people from all around the, the world uh, uh, giving these uh, tools and, and and knowledge and they are giving us back the, the knowledge they have. So this is what I have to say. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Juanita. Um, in this sense, what uh, is important of it, of its experience, no small experience, going deep and uh, sharing with others and replicating. So the university we, we, which allowed is all these 15 years, each experience uh, not only embrace uh, um, an issue, a problem, different areas, different regions, in Latin America, in Africa, in India. Of course, through Animana, we went so deep with camelids, all the Andean region artisans, producers, but Hecho por Nosotros is beyond Animana and share this with leaders, professionals around the world. And this approach of system change is totally the same. The importance is how we share each of the tools to facilitate and then we with each community, we go create a new tool in order to continue enhancing and bringing riches, richness to uh, the toolkit. And the same happens here. I is I am listening, uh, reading someone that is asking about consumers. No, uh, to professionals to go to dive in and to embrace these 15 years of so many experiences with this vision of co-creation, collaboration, integration. We have been working with more than 50 universities, with uh, communities around the world, leaders, as you can see. And this um, allowed us to 
to bring us in another point. I think we have to totally go out about identifying about what fashion is telling. It's just one moment to understand who has to tell me how to dress, yes? I, who has to tell me that uh, I remember when I was a small, I read something that never understood. And that's why I still remember that says that fashion is a strange phenomenon. That something that you like, something you like too much today, you didn't like it yesterday and you would not like it tomorrow. This now is instant by instant. And I was reading that and say, who will tell me what I would like? Yes, that I, I should like something. <laughs> so that rebel spirit, I think, should be uh, shared. And instead of following, let's go deep inside of us, our journeys, our experiences, understanding the world we have, the system we have, how we are part and how we can dive in inside in order to go create this enormous future that we have as humanity. And um, uh, this is uh, a great opportunity. Yes, I think that the problems, maybe we need to suffer more as humanity, as society. Uh, hope not to arrive. Now we have issues as uh, artificial intelligence, as a tool can be so powerful, as an end is so dangerous. And by now, everything is being an end. Yes, an end of pro profit, an end of corruption, an end of domination, uh, an end of people around the world, very few that in their small minds, they are dominating the future of humanity. So uh, important to embrace this journey to understand dressing, how we dress so near our everyday life, our skin, our health, our environment is key in order to rethink our way of living. So I would like uh, to thank all uh, for this journey, uh, to all the leaders of Hecho por Nosotros and the experiences that bring. Um, I think uh, with this, we, we are finished. I don't know if someone wants to ask something, just open the, the micro. Yeah, I just had one thing to talk about. Um, I think it was somebody who talked about um, behaviours. <laughs> um, and I think that's one key um, key part that hasn't, it doesn't get addressed enough that the, the consumer is part of the solution. Um, I think that um, when we talk to children about things like food, uh, we manage to change their behaviours. I'm just using this as an analogy. Um, you know, we talk about being healthy and making healthy choices. And I think that we don't do that enough um, within our educational system to talk about clothing, which is one of our basic human rights, you know, clothing and shelter. Um, you know, you're putting something up against your skin, which is an organ that absorbs things. You're putting plastic next to your skin. Um, the food industry has done a really good job. My kid has grown up knowing what healthy food is. And I think that, you know, we need to make that change within the way we educate our kids, you know, uh, if we really want to have long term change, they need to understand, you know, that, you know, when you put something that is petroleum based up against your skin, you absorb it. Uh, they need to know that the systems that brought that clothing to them uh, hurts other people, the supply chain in human rights and labor rights. They need to know all of this so that they can be informed. As they say, you don't know what you don't know. If you're un mis misinformed, you won't be able to make a choice. And so I think that coming from, um, if we're talking about behaviors and changing, long-term, we need to start right at the beginning when they are five or six in school, <laughs> you know? Uh, it has to be part of the educational system. You teach that along with when you teach the you know, good foods that you should eat and you talk, learn about the supply chain. Um, that's the way to have long-term change. In terms of who we have now, um, you know, 
adults and people, they don't necessarily want to hear things about um, sustainability that is um, preached to them. We're not into shaming anybody into doing anything. But I think that we can make good stories to tell them the truth about what these fabrics are, <laughs> you know, what they do to you, what they do to other people, because I think ultimately people are good and want to do the right thing. So just my little bit there. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. And in this sense, so important to embrace, embrace the different industry. When we go uh, to indigenous communities, all these diverse of languages, of uh, cosmovision, of uh, different legends that connect profoundly with their environment. So at the age of nosotros now we have uh, all uh, an area of recovering these uh, native languages by the, the main actors, uh, tackling the different uh, aspects of legends and bringing students, professionals in order to dive in. And these texts and textiles uh, brings us together with our uh, ancestors, with our story as humanity. And so important because it brings community together from all age, all spaces, technology as a tool, storytelling, and brings also this co-creation that brings gives uh, tools to parents in order to educate differently. You know, we also have uh, so many information that comes from the, the same the same place. So how we co-create these uh, materials to professors, students, families, parents, in order that we reconnect differently with our roots and our story as human beings. And of course, textiles are part of this. So, well, it is all, all a journey that is already ongoing. Uh, some actors are not present. I think uh, investors uh, are far from this, and many times main actors um, lead the system, no? When we talk about academia, sadly, it's much more uh, working for the system or for uh, their own uh, uh, places and all areas. It is not. Uh, it is not just one. We should go for this holistic model and come together to experience, and so everything will flourish differently. So, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, every time, uh, uh, every uh, event or uh, space, it is a pleasure to learn more, more about us about others and about what is possible just being connected with a goal, with a dream uh, and sharing this dream uh, happens in incredible things. So mostly you, the youth, transit this, embrace your values. Do not lose in stupidities that uh, doesn't matter. Thank you so much. Thank you all. It was a great session and we will end the recording now.